Hello, Internet. Today, I want to show you a very specific knowledge graph, and it is a drug repurposing knowledge graph, which is a comprehensive biological knowledge graph relating our genes, the compounds, medical compounds, diseases, biological processing, side effects of drugs, and symptoms together. So this is a special knowledge graph that has been created by AWS, and it includes information from six databases. And these are the databases and the data collected looking for specific drugs. Now, as you can see here, uh, it is part of a beautiful presentation in the DGL, in the Deep Graph Library blog uh, from June 9, 2021. I leave you the link here, or you can go directly and have a look at it. And you see here that we have here a beautiful knowledge graph. We have here our human genes. We have chemical compounds. We have molecular functions. We have diseases. And you see between each and every node, and we have a lot of different node types as encoded with the color, we have different relations. Let's say between gene and disease, in the six databases, they found 15 different relations between the members of each of those sets. And you can go here and you say, okay, if I know all of this and if I link all of this information, is it possible to find a pattern, a specific pattern to fight a specific disease? Or is it that there is a specific gene I'm interested in? Is there a molecular function I can increase or a biological process I have to watch out in specific? So this is beautiful knowledge graph. And you see here we have about uh, 100,000 entities belonging to 13 types of entities. These are our entities and about 6 million triplets belonging to 107 different types of relations. And of course, this is done with our Deep Graph Library Knowledge Graph Embedding. So what we are looking for, and this is clear, is to learn the low dimensional embedding representation of entities, of, of our nodes, and of the relation between those nodes in a lower dimensional vector space so we can find some patterns. So we are here in Amazon SageMaker Studio Lab, and I just want to show you very generally how you code this. Just to give you an idea, I will not have the power to run on a multi-GPU cluster to do the actual training, but let's see how far we can come with our code before we have to spin up a cluster and do some really expensive training. So first of all, you have kind of you install your PyTorch and have here the CPU only version, of course, because let's do it with a single machine. If you have done that, you say, okay, then you install your DGL, your deep graph library. Yes, of course, a new version of Condex is beautiful. Uh, if you have a GPU version or if you have a CUDA core um, GPU, you just specify here your CUDA version and this is it. Then yes, you can of course uh, install it directly from source, but we are already done. We have our pandas, our numpy. And if you check for the version that we installed, you see for DJL, we have .7.2. And for our knowledge graph embedding version running on top of DJL, DJL knowledge embedding is 0 0.1.2. So we are both here very <laughs> uh, experimental as you can see. Now, there is a data set that has been provided by AWS because this was done, and I have to show you this, uh, by Amazon Shanghai AI Lab in cooperation with some other AWS uh, Shanghai Lab, double science team working, University of Minnesota, Ohio State University, Hunan University. So there's a lot of very intelligent uh, experts working on this and they created the data set for us. So what we do is very simply we just go there and I have here a directory with data and you see here there is my tar file and if you extract it you get of course your uh, data file then you have here the, the TSV file has a size of about 366 megabytes 
and then you just split this file of course we have to do the training we have to do the validation and we have to do the testing on our deep graph uh, network or deep graph library so this is split in half and then we have a very interesting thing because we have of course numerically encode our node entities and our edge relations so you see here for a specific gene number let's say a, a gene number 11,224 we say okay this is encoded with one t number something here two and it goes on and goes on and goes on so all our entities have here a numerical encoding and the same of course is done with the relation if you have here a relation a relation is called i don't know this 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 with genes all of a compound this kind of relation this type of relation between two nodes gets now a numerical factor for encoding so we have here our translation, if you want, between the entities, our node entities and our relational, our edges in our knowledge graph. So I'm not going to perform now the splitting up because this is not the main part of it. But what we do, we create now a data frame, a Pandu data frame from our file. And if you want to have a look at what we created, it will take some time. I am working here. On the free version of Amazon Sage Mega Studio, so you see, this is what we get. We have uh, a start a node, our gene twenty one fifty seven. Then we have a kind of uh, relation, our specific link, and then we have a specific output node, our gene, something different. So this goes on and goes on and on, and we have six million links. So great, you will say, I believe you. Now. You assign an ID to each node, create a dictionary of node types. This is done with this here. And if you want to have a look at it, you will see this is our entity dictionary. So what we have, we have the type of nodes that we get is gene, compound, disease, biological process, symptom. So you are familiar gene, molecular function, pathway, biological process. We get our node types. And of course, we can do the same with our edge types if you want. And if you want to list the edge dictionary, you will see we have about, I think it was 100 edges. Let's have a look at this. So these are the different edges we get from a gene with da 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 to a gene, from a compound da 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 to a gene, from a disease da da da, -da relation to a gene. So, and we have all the different uh, relations listed here. I think it should be about 170 if I remember correctly. And now we do, we create a heterograph, a heterogeneous DGL graph. And this is not so complicated. And then we say, okay, the number of nodes for each node type. So this means now we have constructed a full fledged graph. The full complexity is here. And we go in and say, okay, how many nodes we have for each type. And you say here for our, our node type, node class anatomy, or our biological process, you remember, biological process here, we have now with this full uh, graph unfolded, we have 11,381 nodes that are specific to this class biological process. And so you go on and on and on, and you see the graph contains almost 100,000 nodes from 13 different node types. This is our 13 different node types. And in detail, we have 100,000 nodes. I say, hey, the number of edges, oh, for sure, they will be higher. And well, don't be sure. And we get now here for each specific ADG, AEG, AUG, you see, this is the number of edges we get in, in total. If we run here, we have 107 edge types. And in total of all of these edge type, we have about 5.8 million edges in this graph and remember this is a heterogeneous graph so if you say hey i want to have a look at a subset of this graph can i import network x my classical instrument yes of course you can say hey to network x and you get oh sorry only supports homogeneous graph you say no problem i map it to a homogeneous graph yes i know i lose some information that is valid but this is just for a simple visualization 
So I homogeneize my graph <laughs> in a certain way. And what you get is, of course, again, you are almost 97,000 nodes and you're 5.8 million edges now in a presentation, in a homogeneous graph representation by Deutsch Integer 64. And if you see now, I convert this to a network X representation, you will say that we encounter another problem. And now this is, we have a, not an undirected, but we have some directed graph and this will cause another problem. So we have to go another step for visualization and just waiting for the CPU to catch up with the calculation that we have to perform another step. And this is to have an undirected graph. So we just have edges without any anything and then you can say, okay, and now here we go and let's draw the nodes. So these are 197,000 nodes. So I will not do this here in this Jupyter notebook. You can do it yourself. But if you're interested in a particular subset and a sub dimension and a sub graph, even you can uh, transform it very easily back to network X. And I find this a beautiful thing that you can convert forward and backward. Now, uh, to underact it, yeah, this takes a little bit of time. Let's see, sorry, I have no time at all to lose. So the number, you remember, now we are back in DGL. You switch back from Network X to DGL, and we say now, okay, our graph, our node types, our node types, here we are, just our node types, you're familiar with this. Our edge types, our 107 edge types, here there, 107 edges. And if you want to have the canonical E types, then you get between anatomy, anatomy, and anatomy. The next is over the compound. You see, we have ADG, we have here AEG, and our AUG. So you see the relations are different, even if we have the identical start and end node. So you can list all your specific relations, and you can list all your canonical edge types if you want to make sure to have. All the information you are looking for is integrated. And you, as I told you, if you look for a subset, the number of nodes with the specific node type disease, for example, you see we have 5,103 nodes with this particular node type disease. You can make a subgraph, you can analyze the subgraph, the complexity, and maybe even find some information over there. So now just change the notation. Yes, I don't want to show you this. What we do now here, we split it in a training set. We have now, this is 90% and then we have a 5% validation set and a test set that is the rest. So we have three files, training, validation and test data. And then you run now the training model, the knowledge graph embedding model. And let me be clear, we go here back here, where is it? Here we go. Just let me increase this a little bit that you can read it better. And yeah, this is the training. And now here you have the DGL backend is of course PyTorch. We had PyTorch loaded. And now we are here running our deep graph library, the knowledge graph embedding specific library. We train it now. We have our data set we specified. We have our training data set our data files you have shown you are available as a psv file the model name i showed you that we have the trans e and the trans r and some other models available for the embedding we've chosen here the first one the trans e l2 normalized version you can define the batch size the negative sample size you're familiar with negative samples from word embeddings you have a hidden dimension like in each uh, deep neural network. You have a learning rate, uh, 0 0.1. You have your maximum step size. You have your batch size evaluation, your regularization coefficients. And then, of course, you have something. You have an AWS cluster P13.16x large, <laughs> which costs quite a lot of money. So I'm sorry, I cannot afford a multi-GPU training to show you online. 
But I think what we get, and this is the interesting thing, if you do this embedding, and this is the whole reason why we do it, you get the entity and the relation embeddings. So you get four important files out of this training of this learning. You have the entity embedding in a low dimensional vector space where you can perform closeness operation like the dot product or the, the cosine operation. My goodness. Then you have after the node entity, the node embedding, we have our relation, our edge embedding, the relation embedding. And you have here also the embedding in a low dimensional vector space. So you can have, uh, you can investigate only the entities, the nodes, you can investigate the relation, which relations form here closely in this new mapping to a vector, vector space. What does it tell us about similar relation? What does it tell us about the complexity, the reduced complexity in a vector space? And then, of course, you have the ID mapping and the relation ID mapping that you can find from a numerical representation, the whole alphanumerical uh, wording. So this is gorgeous. Unfortunately, our code demonstration stops here because yeah, AWS, I have no sponsor for this video. So if a sponsor is watching, welcome. <laughs> if you want to sponsor this video, we can afford to run on the AWS cluster and do this uh, training in real time. But for the time being, we have to have to follow here now the presentation and as you can guess now we have now with our embedding the low dimensional embedding representation of our entities and the low dimensional embeddings representation of relation of this combined six databases we have now a new instrument on the hand to find similar embeddings similar embeddings that are close to each other in this uh, topological vector space and this is the basis for our drug repurposing task now you can now run through a lot of optimization now for this repurposing task this is the code here but it doesn't make any sense but i think the concept is clear why we encode it how we encode it what model of, uh, of, of the knowledge graph embedding we use and you know that uh, within this library, you have not only the trans R and the trans A model available, but quite some other models I showed you in my last video. And I think this is a beautiful example. If you have a complex data set with complex nodes, complex relation, and here the sum up of six databases, for example, and you want to find patterns, you want to find paths that are in a particular presentation or a low dimensional presentation, find similarities, find common patterns that help you find new compounds or new links to diseases or new genes that have a specific importance for molecular functions. This is why we have graph neural networks, why we have knowledge graph that we built to find in this high complexity that a human being, if you have 107 different edge types and you have close to 6 million uh, particular edges between our nodes, you as a human being, you're not able to see this in total and find similarity patterns. But our knowledge uh, graph embedding has the potential to find here the way out and help us develop new drugs. Thank you. This was it. A very short video for today. I will leave you in the description of this video here the URL for this particular blog detail. This is the original documentation from Deep Graph Library. Have a look at it. And if you go to blog, you find quite some other interesting topics in here. Thank you for listening, for watching, and I see you in the next video.